there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you know Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. Thanks for joining us, guys. We're each week from Aspen, Colorado and the Roaring Fork Valley. We bring you inspirational locals, and today will be no exception, guys. I'm bringing back a good friend, A-list guest. Her name is Susie Kraybacher. She's the CEO and founder of Haiti Children and her mascot and best friend, Strogue. He's my wingman. He's, he's yawning already. We better have a lively conversation, <laughs> Susie, because Strogue's like, come on, man. This isn't like my usual nap time, dude. <laughs> well, Strogue, if it makes you feel better, I'm usually napping at 3 to 3.30. All of the dogs fall, my asleep on your, fall asleep on your show. Oh, oh I'm no. sorry. All of my Story dogs of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Susie and Strogue. Thank you. And it's so great to have now. You have you take care of, like... Thousands of kids. Thousands. <laughs> How many dogs do you guys, you and your husband Joe? Okay, you're not going to believe me, but we doggies? have 23 in Haiti at the campus because we have so many disabled children okay. and they love the dogs. Like assistance doggies. Yes, like, and uh, we take rescue dogs from okay. the streets. <laughs> okay. So we have those and then we have four and a half here. We have three of our <laughs> own and the neighbor's dog, Mindy uh, Nagel. He sleeps with us oh, almost no, every Mindy. night. Dr. Mindy, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. He, he loves to come over to our house to sleep. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Strog, Strogan and that doggy are having sleepover parties, yes, it yes, sounds like. Yes, yes. So. They're having movie fests and, um, you know. Unbelievable. Yeah, I woke up one night and he was under my blanket. I'm like, whose dog is that? Yeah, wait a minute, man. <laughs> I barely know you. <laughs> so that is wild. Well, I mean, we have so much to get to, but I, I want to touch on something that's very recent. Uh, we had this huge snowstorm last week, one to two feet of snow that was like just such a godsend to Aspen. And I know. I know you moved here. You love Aspen. What are your thoughts just kind of on the big snowstorm and kind of the Crazy kickoff to winter? Crazy about, and... you know, it's, I am such a child when it comes to Christmas. Nice. I was a foster kid, so Christmas was never, you know, really a big deal. Okay. And it's, I may, we have the biggest tree I've ever seen in our house. <laughs> and the dogs love it because they think the tree's in the house just for them to pee on. Oh, so they're like, wait a minute. this could... is great. <laughs> yeah, I be... don't have to go outside. But... <laughs> that could be a little <laughs> tricky. <laughs> it's my, you know, I love to cross country ski. So I, that's my meditation time. Okay. I write books in my head while I'm cross country skiing. Nice. And I've got a great second book coming up. <laughs> mm. And we're going to talk about your first book and mm. your off-Broadway yeah. show. Yeah. That's in the works. It's in the works. Um, so cross country. So have you been out to the Aspen Cross not, Country Center not, yet? Not yet. We'll see. Snow? Right. I live in Woody Creek, so right out my okay. door, I've got 26 miles of trail. Oh, there you go. But they haven't groomed it yet. So I think after the next snow, they will, and okay. then I'll be out and gone. <laughs> you won't hear from me again. Do so you like classic style? Classic. Or be like skate skiing. Classic. Classic. I want to okay. learn the skate skiing. Okay. Because it's really good for your butt. <laughs> <laughs> so is snowshoeing. Oh, yes. In oh, fact, yeah. the early ads for Sundog Athletics, now 25 years ago, our first couple of years, we were running ads in the newspaper. It was a picture of myself and some ladies going up buttermilk. But what we did is we superimposed rivets on our butts. Oh, how And then the funny. title of the ad was Buns of Steel. Snowshoeing is the way. <laughs> and we just showed we were it. doing it. I and I call it. it the Great Outdoor Stairmaster. I love but it. But that's all good for our cardio, yep. our body, our, our muscles, mind. our mind. Maybe yeah. the most important thing. Absolutely. You know that that kind of that mental cleansing and yeah, and spiritual. Two you know, nights health. ago, I saw the most majestic thing I think I've ever witnessed. All these elk. There must have been fifty. Oh. Came down the driveway, and they just one by one laid down. Just laid down 
50 oh of them gosh. all at the same time. It was like they were so connected to each other. The babies, the big ones, laid down. And then wow. they were up right at dawn and just wandered on down to the river. Oh, my God. <laughs> There wasn't one with a red nose, was Oh, there? yeah, yeah. Of course. It could have been of reindeer, course. it sounds like. <laughs> <That's laughs> <that's laughs> wow, that's magic. That's like one of those Aspen magical I know. I wish that I had moment. could film it, but it was too dark. Oh, you know, I'm like, nobody's awesome. going to believe this. It's That's incredible. Of course, they went crazy. Oh, yeah. But the elk that's are like, so used to them now. They're like, really? Whatever, dudes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Susie, we're going to take a quick break. Rehydrate. Yep. we got so much to get to here. I do want to thank our winter underwriters for making shows like this happen with Susie and Strogue from Haiti Children. We do want to thank Haiti Children, Gonzo Nation, Highlands Ale House, Klug Properties, Obermeyer, still sporting here each week with Obermeyer Sports, Sundog Athletics, and Pickin County Landfill. We'll go to our only break of the show, guys. We'll be on just for two minutes. When we get back, we're going to talk about the latest update from Haiti, Haiti Children, how you guys can get involved and help out these kids in Haiti. The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of the local show and grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. I'm Klaus Obermeier, and I wish you a terrific winter on the Aspen Mountains. <laughs> Locally owned and located at the base of Aspen Highlands, Highlands Ale House features delicious scratch-made comfort food, cocktails, beer, and more. Their sunny outdoor deck is ski in, ski out. Two miles from Aspen, they're open daily, winter and summer. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's adventure sports school, is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to the local show. People you work with. Thanks for sticking with us here on The Local Show. Guys, our 19th season, I've got Susie Kraybacher in the house. She is the CEO and founder. Does Stroke have a title? Does he? Wingman. Wingman. I like wingman. <laughs> or underdog. <laughs> underdog. I like that. So, Susie, it's kind of shifting gears. It's It's been such a crazy time in Haiti, and Haiti seems to get these kind of like you know, just series of, um, you know, disasters and natural disasters. And uh, we've got a video that kind of summarizes kind of the State of the Union right. down there. Can you give us just a quick intro? Yeah, so right after the president was assassinated, I went because all hell broke loose. Yeah. I am telling you, 60% of the country was controlled by warlords. Wow. And we live in between two very big towns and the worst was happening in Port-au-Prince. I was terrified for our kids. I needed to make sure that we beefed up our security, made sure that we started building our wall higher wow. and put broken glass on the top of the wall Oh, geez. because we had people trying to get in. Yeah, yeah. And one, one 
one person actually penetrated our our girls' dorm, oh. and as I told you earlier, we had 23 dogs. The guards didn't hear him come over the wall, but the dogs did. Nice. He had already bound one of the girls in the girls' orphanage. Oh, jeez. And the dog grabbed his leg, and then all of the dogs took after him, and he fled oh. over the wall. So I'm like, okay, I'm coming down there. We're gonna we're gonna build the wall higher. We're gonna put broken glass on it. We're gonna hire extra extra security. And but the the fact is, if you if they want to come after you, you're not gonna stop them. We have the advantage of being on a hill, and we have a very high guard tower, and we can see at least a mile the road for a mile very clearly and we have some advantage in knowing that we're getting ready to be attacked but you know by the grace of God they're leaving us alone I think part of the reason might be that we feed their children in our schools yeah so they haven't they haven't messed with our schools and we are one of our schools is in the zone where all of this stuff um, germinated the worst, meanest gangs in the country, and they have not yet bothered us. Wow, wow. Well, we're gonna to go to this video and we're gonna learn a little bit more. We'll be right back, guys. On July 7th, Haitian President Moise was assassinated in his home. As of today, it remains a mystery, though some believe that he was gunned down by well-known drug lords in the country. Over 60% of the country has been taken over by gangs under the control of drug lords. And over 800 Haitians and foreigners have been kidnapped since the beginning of 2021. On August 14th, the second earthquake since 2010 hit the south of Haiti, killing over 2,000 people and leaving over a million people homeless. Our Haiti Children team launched an effort to bring over 350,000 dry meals to the victims at the epicenter of the quake. With armed security, we assessed the damage at the epicenter and came back to the U.S. to raise funds to rebuild at least 30 homes and to repair 20 more. We partnered with many of our Aspen friends, thank you so much, as well as Feed the Hungry, Food for the Poor, and Baldan out of California to raise over $400,000. Meanwhile, children are still being abandoned and Haiti Children continues to give permanent shelter, education, medical care, and love to the orphaned. Oh my gosh, we don't want to make her nervous. She's just a little girl, so. Oh dear God, I pray she likes me. <laughs> you, <laughs> she's not too heavy, so. Oh, okay. Thank you. She's Chile, and she's uh, she gets a little nervous around when people are touching her. There is no way that Haiti Children could do this work and save these children's lives without you, and we just want to thank you. It's been such an honor for me to be able to to do this and to see the results. God bless you all, and Merry Christmas. So it's like. Um like a war zone, almost apocalyptic, kind of um, between this kind of the earthquake, the assassination, yeah. um, you know, ho homes in rubble, yes. uh, these gangs kind of taking over, basically. Oh, they've completely... The corruption, they're along with the police now, basically. The, the, the police are out-armed, so they have no choice. Yeah. They can't fight. They can't protect their stations. They have no choice. And... The weapons that have come in are being paid for by all the kidnappings. So keep in mind, there's been over 800 kidnappings since January, and in many cases, they're asking for a million dollars per person. So that's how they're, they're arming themselves. Okay. And the weapons that they got are very sophisticated weapons. Right. It's nothing like what we have at the orphanage. Yeah, probably like automatic. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Type things. Yeah. 
So that seems like, I mean, that's so such a daunting situation. You kind of have these gangs now in cahoots, basically, oh, with yeah. the police. And they're warring against and the federal, each other. What's, how, where does the federal government fit in? Ours? Just, no, Haiti. They don't have they a government. They really don't have a no, there's no legal. Government. there's no legal ruler of the country. When the president was assassinated, the prime minister, which is the equivalent of our vice president, had not yet been sworn in. Okay. He had just fired a corrupt prime minister, so the natural advancement would be that the prime minister would take that position, but he was never sworn in. So, uh, and this, the third choice would have been the Supreme Court judge, but he died of COVID. So there is no, there are less than uh, 12 politicians who are not legal running the country against the warlords who have gotten on television and Jeez. said, we're the president, meet your new president. We will tell you when you can come out. We will tell you when the roads are open. We will tell you when the banks can open. We will tell you when the gasoline will be uh, delivered to the gas stations. We will tell you when the hospitals can open. So what? we're getting all these little kids that, you know, the hospitals get abandoned children often who have disabilities because in Haiti it's a curse and you are thrown out of your village if you have a disabled child except for our village and there's approximately 10,000, 12,000 people there. Well our village in 28 years almost we don't do that anymore. We've educated them that those children are blessings and we have a physical therapy center, we have a, a women's um, coalition that we will take your child while you go to work. We will give it free medical care, free medicine, free operations. You're keeping your child because I know you love your child, and they do. But So the hospitals are mostly out of fuel because the tankers offshore are not being allowed to unload the gasoline and the f diesel. So generators cannot run. The, the country is 98% without electricity. So the, when the babies are abandoned, they usually can take care of them for a while before they're processed to go into an orphan, orphanage. But now we're the only orphanage that will take them because we have solar. Um, this is brand new. After the earthquake, a gentleman who arrives here in Aspen today, I'm gonna meet him tomorrow night, donated the money for us to have 100% solar. We'll never have to worry about being in the dark again like we were when our little girl almost got raped. We've been in pitch black for 28 years. We have generators, but we can't run them all the time because it's so expensive. So he, oh um, his name is Mr. Sorensen, and he is completely solarizing in our entire campus, which means we'll be safer. Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. Off the grid. Um, and we're growing our own food, but we also just got the biggest blessing that we've ever received in the history of Haiti children. Um, an organization in Indiana called Feed the Hungry has told us they will give us up to five 40-foot shipping containers a year to not keep for ourselves, but to give to the schools in our area that don't have a feeding program. You know, because we're not just going to go and, you know, throw food at the poor. We want to make sure that it's done so that it doesn't create dependence, right. which is a real tragedy in Haiti. So we're giving it to the schools to do a feeding program so the kids can stay awake because you, they come to school without having eaten, have, haven't eaten. So next year our program will go up to um, a little over two, I think it's 2.2 million meals. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it really So to is. remind, and we talked about this um, in the last show, last couple shows, is how many kids do you have right there in your orphanage and then how many do you take care of in total? Right, well, as of three days ago, we have two new baby boys and um, they were both abandoned at hospitals. Both of them have hydrocephalic syndrome, but we managed to get um, the operations donated, so they should be able to get their operations and have hopefully a normal life. Um, if not, you know, we'll be with them no matter what. Um, so that brings us up to 120 children. Okay. And we, um, 
t in our schools, we take care of over 600 in our feeding programs and our water programs and our clinics and our mobile clinics and in our therapy center. Over 8,000 patients last year, I think, in just wow. the clinics. Wow. So that doesn't include the feeding or the water. But um, we have one of our greatest success, successes is getting families to realize that if your child is disabled, it can get a surgery in some cases to straighten the legs. It can, with therapy and psychiatry, you know, um, become so much more functional. And people are keeping their their disabled children in our area. And we we want, hope that that we as we grow and as people continue to support us, that people will keep their little children. Right. It's like an educational process. Uh, pushing into a cultural kind of a, a yeah. way of thinking, you know, that they're just used to like, hey, well, if the person is um, disabled, they're somehow cursed. It's a different, yes. it's a different culture. And Joe talked about this a little bit. You know, they, they have a different way of thinking. You know, there's like voodoo and different it is. strange um, dark aspects. And yeah. not to say that they're, there's bad, they're bad people, but they just have a different way of approaching life and thinking well, about things. So there's an education that goes on there too. Voodoo is inherently bad in every single form in Haiti. Yeah. Um, it is a religion, it's the national religion, and it's based on fear yeah. and blood. And you, your imagination can take it from there. Right. But I worked in the government hospital for 14 years, and I had every week at least 10 children, babies, toddlers, uh, teenagers come in from wounds from voodoo ceremonies mostly machete wounds. Oh so um, it, this is a very seriously evil form of voodoo. Yeah, yeah. Well, one question, you know, I mean, you're, you go, you've helped so deeply. The problems are so overwhelming that, like, just briefly, like, how do you take care of yourself? I mean, you talk about cross-country skiing, yeah. right? And because that's a lot, I mean, for anyone to mm -hmm. deal with. And I know you share that with your husband, Joe, and, and others in the organization. But just kind of like how it's a couple things that really help you, you know, just yeah. take care of yourself. Well, um, after this last trip, I started trauma therapy because I saw things that nobody should see. And I've seen it for 28 years. And I'm thinking, you know, it's time to talk about it to somebody. Yeah. And... Um, you know, I don't expect my friends and family to be a therapist. I need someone to talk to who knows how to help me process all this stuff. Um, and I also, I have my little herbs over there that I take with me <laughs> everywhere um, that, you know, for calm, for peace. And I'm a very, very strong Christian. So my prayer, I I, I, I spend a lot of time with God straight yeah. on. You yeah. know, I I ask questions. Sometimes I don't get the answers, but um, sometimes I get shocked by what I feel I'm being led to do because I don't ever feel equipped. But I've never been harmed. I've been, I've gotten just about every disease you can possibly get in Haiti, including cholera. But, um, you know, I've been in situations where I've had a gun pointed at me so many times and been forced out of my car, but I've been able to, in every case, get out of it without any of us harmed. We had 36 of our employees um, attacked just in the last six months. Um, in the past 28 years, I've had 62 children kidnapped. We've gotten all of them back without paying a dime. So, you know, it's a, it's a very hard country, but yeah. I love that country. Yeah. I hold a Haitian passport. I'm an honorary Haitian citizen. And when I took that citizenship, I took it seriously. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, again, the caring, the level of love and caring is, is obvious. And it's just so crucial that we take care of ourselves, right, so we can give to other people. Yeah. I want to know, though, as we kind of, wrap our last couple of minutes of the show is how, how can people help? How can they get involved? Because this, yeah. this is, there's a lot to do. There's a there. lot to do. Well, first of all, everybody should take care of themselves because you can't take care of anybody if you, you're not healthy yourself. And that's why I live here. 
I love this town and everybody in it. And there's so much wealth and so much blessing here. I, I encourage you to share your blessings. I encourage you to give and help. These people are not beggars. They're not, um, they, they wouldn't ask if they met you for anything, but they need your help. Yeah. And we can't take care of these kids unless people help us. So my um, website is www.haitychildren.org. Um, so please go on there. Please give. It's the giving season. 100% yeah. of every dollar goes directly to the programs, undiluted. It is the giving season. And, and like for me to support Haiti Children, it makes me feel good. It, like it's something good for ourselves, right? When we give, we receive. Yeah. As kind of cliche as that sounds. But you better watch it. it. You might end up with a kid named after you. <laughs> Make sure it's Eric with a K. I hate that C. <laughs> okay. I just named one Joe yesterday. Uh, well, if you maybe if you really like these cookies, or as my dad would say, Eric, if you play your cards right, uh, maybe I'll get a something named after me someday. <laughs> At least a puppy. Yeah, there you go. There you Eric, go. you're going to be surprised. Next time I'm on this show, you're going to have a child named after uh, you. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. I'm not worthy, but I am so honored to have you on the show. Did you have fun today? I, you know, I always have fun. You, you give me levity, <laughs> and your smile just goes on forever. Well, as tough as the challenges are, the rewards are equally as great, and it does make us feel good, and, and it's critical, you know, to help other people, especially when we're so blessed. I know. So thank you for what you, you do, Susie. Thank Joe for us too. I will. And thank you guys for watching this week on The Local Show. The Gonzo Foundation is a nonprofit organization created to promote literature, journalism, and political activism through the legacy of Hunter S. Thompson and is a proud supporter of The Local Show and Grassroots TV. For more information, visit thegonzofoundation.org. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience private, all-inclusive snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and fat biking instructional adventures that will improve your safety, performance, and enjoyment. Welcome to 